I want to take a couple minutes and talk about something that I've run into with Gibbs as well as other CAM systems. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I have this model and what really what I want to do is I want to cut this top face, like all of these faces around here. So what I want to do is I want the tool to follow around that outside edge and then offset it down into the part so that it's a constant step over tool path. So when I create a constant step over tool path, what Gibbs is going to do is create a bounding line, a boundary using the outside of these surfaces and then offset it in. So I have that here. So if we look at this, it looks pretty good. You can say, you know, it's a constant step over. I have all the settings and stuff like that. So if I just look at this, it looks okay. Now the problem is, is if I zoom in and really look at this tool path, I end up with all these little jagged lines, right? There's not smooth curves or smooth lines. So what I want to do is I want to talk about where these lines come from as well as how to fix this. Uh, it's pretty easy to fix and once I explain where they come from I think you'll understand um, the fix and how to create better three axis tool paths um, when there's a bounding line involved. Okay, so let's talk about where these lines come from. So Gibbs as well as just about every other cam system on the market, what they do is when you say do it or create tool path what it does is it takes that surface and turns it into a bunch of flat triangles. All right, so it looks something like this. So we can see that it takes that surface, turns it into these triangles, basically it turns it into an STL model. And it takes, what it's gonna do is take that bounding curve and project it down onto these near vertical surfaces. And really that's the issue here is it's, these surfaces, this flat surface and this tangent point, is it's not vertical, it's near vertical, so it's, we get these triangles that are kind of on this angle. So when that bounding curve is projected onto that, it ends up going up and down depending on the angle. Because of the way this tool path in particular, constant step over is calculated, it takes that bounding curve and then offsets it up. That's why we don't just see these curves on this line, because it takes this first tool path, this bounding curve, and then offsets it up. So we can actually see a pattern here as it offsets up and then it gets better as it goes on. So that's where it comes from. So let's talk about how to fix it. So what I did to fix this is I created a planar surface for Gibbs to be able to project the bounding curve onto. Now, when I say that, what we do is we select that planar surface as well as the surface I want to cut. You can see I made the planar surface a little bit bigger. You can see that it goes in. You can make this smaller just as long as it's equal to the radius of your cutter. So, you know, the tool pad doesn't start up here or something. I don't mind having a little couple extra moves in there, you know, depending on what my step over is. You know, maybe it's like a lead in, so it's not going right onto the, right onto the part. But, um, you know, you can adjust the size of that. So anyway, so I select this planar surface and then the surface is to cut. So what that does is that allows Gibbs Cam to create this planar, sur or I'm sorry, this bounding curve around this planar surface and project it onto that flat surface. So this is what we end up getting. We get a nice rounded tool path instead of something that looks like that. Okay, so there you go. So that's um, a little explanation on how these three axis tool paths are generated and a little um, trick on getting rid of those jagged lines. If you have any questions about creating three axis tool paths or uh, creating planar surfaces, go ahead and just reach out to us at Gibbs Camp Technical Support or feel free to contact your local reseller. Thank you.